Welcome. Um, this is Brother Doug with my sister Sally, my brother Dennis, my brother Bobby, my sister Kristen. We are doing the part two today of the Isaiah study. We are um, hoping to finish the book of Isaiah by the end of today. Uh, we are, I'm going to have Sister Sally start us off with chapter 60. So, um, Sister Sally, please take us away. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the esteem of Yahuwah has risen upon you. For look, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But Yahuwah arises over you, and his esteem is seen upon you. And the Gentiles shall come to your light, and sovereigns to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. All of them have gathered. They have come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are supported on the side. Then you shall see and be bright, and your heart shall throb and swell. For the wealth of the sea is turned to you. The riches of the Gentiles come to you. A stream of camels cover your land. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba come, bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praises of Yahuwah. All the flocks of Cater are gathered to you. The rams of Nebaioth serve you. They come up for acceptance on my altar, and I embellish my esteemed house. Who are these who fly like a cloud and like doves to their windows? Because the coastlands wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first, to bring your sons from afar, their silver and their gold with them, to the name of Yahuwah your Elohim, and to the set-apart one of Yasserel, because he has adorned you, and the sons of foreigners shall build your walls. By wrath I have smitten you, but in my delight I shall have compassion on you, and your gates shall be open continually. They are not shut. <clears throat> Excuse me. They are not shut day or night to bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles and their sovereigns in procession. For the nation and the reign that do not serve serve you shall perish, and those Gentiles shall be utterly laid waste. The esteem of Lebanon shall come to you, cypress, pine, and the box tree together to embellish the place of my set apart place. And I shall make the place of my feet esteemed. And the sons of those who afflicted you come bowing to you. And all those who despised you shall bow themselves at the soles of your feet. And they shall call you city of Yahuwah, Sion, in the set apart one of Yasserel. I guess that should be Sion. Is that right? Um, whatever, whatever you think is best, whatever um, you're convicted to say, the Septuagint actually a lot of times will say Sion, like S-I-O-N. So there's many different um, ways to say it. Um, Masoretic text uses Zion, Z-I-O-N. Um, so whatever you feel comfortable to use. Okay, thank you. Instead of you being forsaken and hated, so that no one passes through you. I shall make you an everlasting excellence, a joy of many generations, and you shall drink dry the milk of the Gentiles and shall milk the breast of sovereigns, and you shall know that I, Yahuwah, your Savior and your Redeemer, am the Elohim of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I bring gold, and instead of iron, I bring silver, and bronze instead of wood, and iron instead of stones, and I shall make your officers peace, and your magistrates righteousness. Violence shall no longer be heard in your land, neither wasting nor ruin within your borders, and you shall call your walls deliverance, and your gates praise. No longer is the sun your light by day, nor does the moon give light to you for brightness. 
but Yahuwah shall be to you in everlasting light, in your Elohim, your comeliness, comeliness. No longer does your sun go down, nor your moon withdraw itself, for Yahuwah your, shall be your everlasting light, and the days of your mourning shall be ended, and your people, all of them righteous, shall inherit the earth forever, a branch of my planting, a work of my hands to be adored. The little shall become a thousand, and the small one a, and the small one a strong nation. <clears throat> Ayahuas shall hasten it in its time. Hallelujah. Wow. Yes, beautiful. hallelujah. That's beautiful. I see a direct correlation with the book of Revelations towards the end here where it says, um, no longer will we need a sun or a moon for life. And you can actually find that literally verbatim in the book of Revelations where Messiah Yahushua is the lamb, says the lamb is the lamb, Yahuwah is the light from the lamb. And so um, I believe Revelations Probably John quoted from Isaiah when he was writing Revelation. Um, he quoted from a lot of other places in the book of Revelations, like Jeremiah, when he says, come out of her, my people, that's from the book of Jeremiah. Um, so I find it uh, extremely interesting towards the end here that there's a direct uh, verbatim correlation with the book of Revelations with that Yahuwah will be the light will be our light. We will not need the sun and moon anymore. So, found that interesting. Also, I think this has to do with the millennium reign. I think this is uh, what it's talking about, where it says, um, they will possess the land permanently. They will be the seeding. I have planted the honor, honored work of my hands. The smallest of them will become a family. The weakest of them will become a mighty nation. At the, at the right time, I, Yahuwah, will make it happen quickly. So I think this is uh, definitely preluding to the thousand year reign. So let me unmute Brother Dennis. So let's see here. I'm trying to think if there's anything to add to the chapter that I found. Hmm. Another thing's interesting too is that your gates will always be open. Now, anyone that's um, knows about the rules for the sabbath and for the new moons that the gates are um i believe it's they're only to be um i think it's in ezekiel where it says that on the six work days your your gates shall be um shut but on the non-working days on and then it, it, it hints that the new moon and the Sabbath are non-working days and on, on the non-working days that the gates will be open. It's kind of interesting in this chapter, in the future context, it's saying that the gates will always be open. So I find that pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, it says that they won't even be closed day or night, meaning like a whole 24-hour period, it will be open. Um, so that's pretty interesting to me. Um, uh, and then it talks about that we will not, we will at that time know that Yahuwah is our savior, the mighty one of Jacob, your defender. So it's almost like future context, Yahuwah is basically saying that all of us are going to know him as our savior. Awesome. 
file. So um, I was wondering if anyone wants to read um, chapter 61, maybe if Bobby and Kristen want to read. Sure, I'll take it. The spirit of the master Yahuwah is upon me because Yahuwah has anointed me to bring good news to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahuwah and the day of vengeance of our Elohim, to comfort all who mourn, to appoint unto those who mourn in Sion, to give them embellishment for ashes, the oil for joy, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And they shall be called trees of righteousness, a planting of Yahuwah to be adorned. And they shall rebuild the old ruins, raise up the former wastes, and they shall restore the ruined cities, the wastes of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of your foreigner be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be called priests of Yahuwah, servants of our Elohim, shall be said of you. You shall consume the strength of the nations and boast in their esteem. Instead of your shame and reproach, they rejoice the second time in their portion. Therefore, they take, a possession, they take possession a second time in their land. Everlasting joy is theirs. For I, Yahuwah, love right ruling. I hate robbery for ascending offering. And I shall give their reward in truth and make an everlasting covenant with them. And their seed shall be known among the nations and their offspring in the midst of the people. All who see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed Yahuwah has blessed. I greatly rejoice in Yahuwah, my being exalts in my Elohim. For he has put garments of deliverance on me. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its bud, as the garden causes the seed to shoot up, so the master Yahuwah causes righteousness and praise to shoot up before all the nations. Wow. This this reminds me of that place in Revelations, I think, two or three, where uh, where Yahushua says, um, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan come worship at your feet to let you know that I have loved you. And uh, I always see a precept for that. Yahuwah's people will be served by unbelievers, by foreigners. And um, kind of the same thing, like when they left Egypt, you had them spoil the Egyptians. Um, I always see a concept of Yahuwah's people being served by Gentiles, by unbelievers. And um, very interesting. Yeah especially like verse seven, instead of your shame and reproach, they rejoice a second time in their portion. Therefore, they take possession a second time in their land. Everlasting joy is theirs. And indeed it shall be. I think this, uh, to me, this has a lot to do with the, uh, could be hinting to the wedding feast of the bride and the lamb. And uh, to me, I think he's using a lot of metaphors to show that, you know, Yashra is his bride, that he's going to adorn her with um, righteousness, 
the clothes of salvation. So um, you can even take that back to the garden where Yahuwah, uh, the first slaughtering of an animal happened because sin entered the world and he had to clothe Adam and Eve because they, uh, you know, a lot of times nakedness can be a metaphor for sin and can actually be connected to sin. So I think that's why Yahuwah made animal skins for Adam and Eve. That's just my opinion. Um, and so I think a lot of times when he uses metaphors like clothes of salvation, um, you know, he's referring to the fact that he's covering us with his salvation, robes of righteousness. Um, and it kind of just re reminds me that one day we're going to have that wedding feast. Um, so that's kind of what I got from the last uh, two chap two verses of this chapter. So let's see here. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear us. Okay. Sounds a little choppy. Okay. Yeah, it might be from my side. Um, I think uh, what I don't like either is that I can't see from this app here if my side's, you know, having bad reception. Usually, I used to be able to see, like, the bar signal, whether it's yellow or red. Now it doesn't show anything on my computer, so it doesn't help either. Um, so I think I'm going to... I'm going to try to do chapter 62. Just let me know, guys, if you can't hear me well, if I'm starting to um, chop out, kind of just um, unmute yourself so you can let me know. Um, so, But I'm about to be chapter 62 of Isaiah, which in my translation says, Yerushalayim's salvation is coming. And here we go. For Sion's sake, I will not remain silent for Yerushalayim's sake. I will not rest until its righteousness shines like the dawn and its salvation burns brightly like a torch. The nations will see your righteousness. All kings will see your esteem. You will be given a new name that Yahuwah will announce. Then you will be a beautiful crown in the hand of Yahuwah. A royal crown in the hand of your Elohim. You will no longer be called deserted. Your land will no longer be called destroyed. But you will be named my delight, and your land will be named married. Yahuwah is delighted with you, and your land will be married. As a young man marries a woman, and so your sons will marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so your Elohim will rejoice over you. I have posted watchmen on your walls, Yerushalayim. They will never be silent day or night. Whoever calls on Yahuwah, do not give yourselves any rest. Do not give him any rest until he establishes Yerushalayim and makes it an object of praise throughout the earth. Yahuwah has sworn with his right hand and with his mighty arm, I will never again let your enemies eat your grain, nor your foreigners drink the new wine which you made. Those who harvest again will eat it and praise Yahuwah. Those who gather grapes will drink wine in my set-apart courtyards. Go through, go through the gates, prepare a way for the people, build up, build up the highway, clear away the stones, raise a flag for the people. Yahuwah has announced to the ends of the earth Tell my people, Sion, your Savior is coming. His reward is with him and the people he has won arrive ahead of him. They will be called the set-apart people, those reclaimed by Yahuwah, and you will be called sought after, a city not deserted. So very interesting here. So there's like a combination. What I see is a, a combination between the bride of Yahuwah, Yashra'al, Israel, and 
the city of Yahuwah and that it's, there's a connection between the bride and the city. And many times in this chapter, he's using Yerushalam, the city, as a metaphor for his bride and kind of connecting us to the set-apart city. So I found that intriguing. Um, what I also found interesting too is that he says i am coming and my reward he says tell my people zion your savior is coming his reward is with him that's yahushua's exact quote so take it or leave it for what that might be what 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 it might mean in my personal opinion but it's kind of interesting that yahushua says the same exact thing in the book of revelation I'm coming and my reward is with me. So that's what I got from the chapter anyway. So I don't know if you guys have anything to add. Um, I just unmuted you, Sally and Dennis, so if you have anything you would like to add, any comments from the chapter? I thought it was interesting in verse 4 about uh, you shall be called Hephzibah in your land married, for Yahuwah shall delight in you, and your land is married. Interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting that there's, I think there's a connection between us and the, and the land of Israel, the, you know, the city of Jerusalem and us are somewhat connected. Um, Absolutely. Because it's weird in, in Revelations, it even says, here comes the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of gold coming out of heaven to the earth. And it says, prepared as a bride. So, right. The, even know that you know Yahuwah's goal was for us, all of us, to be His bride. The the set apart city is also called, you know, somewhat is a metaphor for the bride. So it's it's very interesting. There's a there's a definite connection between us and the city of Jerusalem. Oh yeah, and he also says in Revelation, though, for uh, he is. Uh, prepared rooms for us, or some translation says mansions, in Jerusalem. Hmm. Yeah. Very interested that um, talks about foreigners will not take your grain, your new wine. So it kind of seems like this is a restoration of the 12 tribes here pretty much restoring what was what was originally given to descendants of Jacob and that no longer will Yahuwah be giving what's theirs to the Gentiles pretty much wow uh, yes um yeah, very, very interesting. And I think there's a connection I saw here where he talks about, oh, yeah, you will be given a new name. And that's another connection with Revelations, I believe, where it says that we all shall be given a new name. Right. Um, so there's a lot of interesting connections here, um, spiritually and metaphorically, um, and what what the connection is. Um, you know, one day I would like to do a great study on on uh, what is our connection with the set apart city of Jerusalem and why why is Jerusalem and uh, Yashrael sometimes interchangeably used as metaphors for one another. Uh -huh. So that's just personally me. I would like to find out why you who does that. Um, because um, he says. Your sons will marry you. Now, that's an interesting metaphor there. Now, whatever that means, does that mean that we're going to marry the city? Um, 
you know, that's, that's, uh, that's one uh, questionable verse that, I don't know, kind of piqued my interest in this chapter was your sons will marry you, whatever that means. Yeah. Uh, so definitely can't be in the literal sense because that would be incest. So I definitely don't think that's a literal sense. Um, Sounds more like grafting in or all yeah. becoming part of Israel. That's where I am. Um, very interesting. A lot of millennial stuff and a lot of um, kingdom stuff in the past couple of chapters. A lot, a lot of stuff talking about um, the millennial, um, even the end after Satan's destroyed. Um, seems like it's talking about the New Jerusalem being on the earth. Um, very interesting. Hmm. So we got about three more chapters, and it looks like we are going to have to do a part two, everyone. Um, so thank you, everyone, for joining us. This was part two. Um, stay tuned for part three. We will be shortly back um, to finish the book of Isaiah. We are going to be starting Isaiah chapter 63 next. Um, please um, look for the part three video. If you don't get a chance to see it live. Um, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Ooh.